It had become routine, so routine that on this 25th shuttle flight, the three major television networks were taping the liftoff from Cape Canaveral for later broadcast. They did not carry it live. NASA, which knows a thing or two about image making, had obviously put some thought into gaining broader public interest. Consider the crew, among them an aerospace engineer whose grandparents were Japanese immigrants, an unmarried Jewish woman who, in addition to her doctorate in electrical engineering, played classical piano, a black PhD in physics from MIT who also held a fifth degree black belt in karate, and at President Reagan's request, an American high school teacher whose other primary qualifications were her vital interest in spaceflight and her courage. Those are just some of the crew members who set out this morning for what everyone thought would be another routine mission. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus three hours in holding. We're about uh, three hours away from uh, today's launch of mission 51L and about 18 minutes away from picking up the count. And uh, they are posing for their traditional uh, shot during their breakfast. And here comes the flight crew now. Commander Dick Sobey, followed by mission specialist uh, G. Ripley, Ron McNair, and uh, pilot Mike Smith, followed by Krista Masala, feature in space, and uh, Ellison Onizuka, and payload specialist Greg Jarvis. Uh, as they uh, get ready, uh, the uh, teacher observer, uh, Krista McAuliffe, has been handed an apple by the uh, closeout crew. The 51L mission ready to go. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. We have main engine start. 4, 3, 2, 1, and liftoff. Liftoff of the 25th space shuttle mission. minutes and more and obviously you can't send aircraft and uh, ships into an area where debris is falling where they may, they themselves may be endangered there are recovery forces in the general area uh, others being deployed including aircraft and ships we uh, saw uh, what we believe to be a paramedics uh, uh, parachuting into the uh, impact area and at this special moment let us remember in silent prayer those who were involved in the spacecraft shuttle accident just a few minutes ago off Florida. Let us pray. The Vice President and the Foreign Policy Advisor John Poindexter uh, came in with others and informed the President that the news had just broken. Uh, we immediately adjourned our Oval Office meeting and went into an adjoining uh, room, the President's study, where there's a television, and the President then began to review television reports of the uh, explosion there shortly after the launch. It's a, it's a sad day. Uh, my heart goes out to Krista's husband and her children. Um, an exciting day has turned into a very sad one. It's a terrible disaster. And I remember thinking that uh, in the early days of the space program, we used to sort of half expect something to go wrong. But these days, we've become so used to it automatically working and computerized and everything that it's an even bigger shock. Well. Man, they're monitoring systems uh, on their injection into orbit. When it happened, they were caught by surprise. And even if they had been expecting it, they couldn't have done anything about it. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, flight controllers reviewing their data here in Mission Control. We will uh, provide 
provide you with more information as it becomes available. These searches have not revealed any evidence that the crew of Challenger survived. I guess in our human existence there is triumph and there is tragedy. And uh, man tries many things. Sometimes, though, we aren't perfect. And then there's a tragedy that uh, brings us back to our own human frailties. The president, in consultation with the leadership of Congress, has decided to postpone the State of the Union address that was scheduled for this evening. I'm reminded of when I was a boy in another age of flight and before the age of television when I was gathered around a radio with my parents listening to the landing of the Hindenburg and then the resultant explosion and burning of that Hindenburg. As long as man has the thirst for knowledge, we will continue to press outward. And in the process, there is risk. That risk is taken by each one of us every day. And that risk is understood by all the members of a crew that climb into a loaded spaceship. I think that the uh, NASA and the, uh, and the Congress will examine this question of whether we have not been premature in encouraging civilians to fly. It's a surprise to me that it happened, but I, I would go again tomorrow. If, if NASA would let me go, I would go again. And it has cleared the tower. We've grown used to wonders in this century. It's hard to dazzle us. But for 25 years, the United States space program has been doing just that. We've grown used to the idea of space, and perhaps we forget that we've only just begun. We're still pioneers. They, the members of the Challenger crew, were pioneers. And I want to say something to the school children of America who were watching the live coverage of the shuttle's takeoff. I know it's hard to understand, but sometimes painful things like this happen. It's all part of the process of exploration and discovery. It's all part of taking a chance and expanding man's horizons. The future doesn't belong to the faint-hearted. It belongs to the brave. The Challenger crew is... Joining our other guests, when we return, a man with a very special perspective on our triumphs and our tragedies in space, Ray Bradbury, one of America's most distinguished science fiction authors. Mm -hmm.